Hi, this is Ryan from jrocks.com. Just wanted to go through a quick tutorial of installing Gem using the Gem installer. Um, what this installer is is a, a Windows application that allows you to automatically install Gem right to your website um, without having to manually upload the files using FTP or some other means. So let's get started. First, you have to download the Gem executable file. This can be done by logging on to our website and clicking the download now button or registering for for an account on our site jrocks.com now once you've downloaded that executable this is it right here gem.exe let's can go ahead and, and click that to begin the installation process here's the installer let's click next to begin now you're gonna have to get your FTP logging information um, what this is is the actual FTP web address or I'm sorry FTP address that allows you to upload your files to your website if you don't know what this is you're going to have to use or you're gonna have to ask your web host for that information so let's go ahead and type it in we're gonna upload this to our test FTP website and now that we've typed in our FTP information you have to click on the browse button what this does is it automatically tries to uh, the installer tries to log into your FTP site and browse the folder where you want to upload the gem files um, in our case the HTML folder is the root folder what we're gonna want to do is install gem on a subfolder in our case since this is a tutorial we're gonna install it on a folder called demo so what we're going to do is click on make new folder type in demo so now this is the demo folders there we're going to click OK now this installer will upload all the files for gem onto the demo folder click next this is the URL that we're going to be installing gem in um, in your case it'll probably be something like www.yourdomainname.com slash folder name you know, such as store or shop whatever it may be so let's go ahead and click next to start uploading everything is okay here PHP version click install Okay, now the installer's finished uploading the gem files. We're going to click finish, and this will automatically open a browser window to continue the installation on the web based part. So I click finish. Click continue. Agree to the end user license agreement. Click continue. Here now we're in the uh, checking system requirements page. Gem tries to automatically check the requirements for installing uh, Gem on your site, so it'll go through a checklist here. Um, so just make sure they're all green. Uh, the installer already uploads all the files in binary format, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you upload the files manually, you're going to have to make sure that you upload it in binary format. Here in the installation code area, this is the installation code you should have received when you first download gem from our website so let's type that in uh, database information now gem does not automatically create the database for you you will have to manually create that using um, PHP my admin or your web hosting control panels database management tool you're going to have to get the database server name the database name as well as the username and password to access the database one thing to keep in mind is you have to make sure you've set permissions for the username to access the database so that um, it will automatically be able to create all the all the database tables um, as well as uh, install gem for you so let's go ahead and type in that database information here a database name we've done is just demo and also the username is demo password is demo pass 
Okay, now we're in the file paths area. Gem tries to automatically look for, um, automatically try to detect your folder folder path as well as your domain name. In our case, we're going to uh, be installing this software on a test site, so it's not going to be a www subdomain. It's going to be a, a different one for our test. So let's type that in, and now we're on the enter admin information. You can enter your first and last name here, as well as your administrative e email address. You also have an option to click on this checkbox here to send the username and password to the email address you've given there. So let's go ahead and click continue to begin to finish up the installation. Okay, here we go. Looks like the installation was a success. Gem has been able to install all the tables and configure your site. Now, just keep in mind the uh, username and password given here. Gem automatically or auto generates the password for you. So keep those uh, for your records. Later on, after you first log in, you do have an option to change those values in the manage admins area. Uh, one last thing here is. Make sure you go through the post installation notes, delete the install folder, and also change the images folders and images subfolders to the correct permissions if you want to upload things such as uh, photos for your products, things like that. Uh, okay. Finally, you do have an option to click on the documentation site. This will open up another window so you, you can browse through all the documentation for GEM as well as uh, configuration and administration uh, instructions as well. So that's done. Let's go ahead and try and log in now. Continue. Here's the login page for your... Okay. A couple of small alerts here. As we said earlier, you have to change if delete the install folder and also change the permissions for the config.php and the database.php files. So for us to do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, log into our FTP site using FileZilla or in your case, whatever FTP software you're using. We'll be using FileZilla. You can download this as a free FTP client software. Okay, now we're going to add and delete the install folder first. Let's install. Now we're going to change the permissions for config in the database file. So system application config config.php and database. So we just right click on that, click file permissions. We want to make sure it's only read only, so it's the uh, 444 numeric value and also check the boxes here for read only. Click OK. That should be done. Now let's refresh this page and you've got gem installed.